Okay, we've got a different topic, a different type of video for this week. And if you have your spouse sit you down to watch this video, we apologize We're sorry. to you. Blink twice if your spouse is holding you hostage. I'm here to help. Don't worry too much because it actually might backfire. <laughs> okay, it might backfire on them. Well, because it might end up that they are responsible for <laughs> making this all come together. They might have more work to do than, than you will. Um, but anyway, we've got four things we want to talk to you about as it relates to maybe you have someone in the family, maybe you have a spouse that doesn't want to RV. RV? Doesn't want to go on that, doesn't want to do this. Yeah. Okay, so we want to talk a little bit I about. I see that life and no. <laughs> That's right. So we've got four things we want to chat with you about. Um, we've written them down. Preconceived notions. Mm -hmm. Unspoken expectations, which is something we just learned about. Yes. Which has been great. Hidden agendas and helicopter RVers. <laughs> I okay. love that one. I love that one. All right. Now, we also realize that this particular segment, this episode, might not be for everybody within KYD. Mm -hmm. uh, don't worry. Next Sunday, we actually headed to Portland, Maine. Mm -hmm. Awesome. We got your travel plans covered. Oh, yeah. And yes. then after that, we went down to Martha's Vineyard. Where's he going? I thought he was picking us up. Well, I don't know. He must not have got your text. Dang it. No, no, no. Leonard, your other 12 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> Rented a Mini Cooper. Charlie loved it. It's a Mini Cooper. Okay, what did I say? <laughs> Cooper. Cooper. Something. Cooper. Charlie absolutely loved it. Yes. Right? And then uh, we've got a whole bunch of other stuff as we prepare the Bluebird, which we're going to be picking up from Future Solutions here soon. soon. Oh my gosh, and they're then, doing such a great job with oh all yeah, the solar. Just ridiculous. And then we're going to be heading down Route 66. So that's kind of some of the stuff that's coming up. But um, we just wanted to pull one of these little topics that we've had on our list. We have to make time for these questions because mm -hmm. they come and then we never give answers to them. So yeah. this is what we're doing. We are answering a big topic that big we topic. get letters about all the time. Yeah. So with that, oh, let me have the camera straight with that <laughs> in mind. Let's jump in. Like this oh, is how we always do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the first thing we want to chat about is preconceived notions of RVing. But before we talk about that, maybe we should talk about preconceived notions of this video. Maybe you're thinking, hey, both my spouse and I love to camp. I don't need to watch this video. And there might be just one thing that you get out of it that makes it even better. So, join us anyway. I'm just getting set up for Trisha and I gotta do a little workout. Oh, gotta get a rug. <laughs> Woo! So the first point is mental image. What is your mental image? We talked a little bit about this in Alaska. Think of Alaska, now close your eyes. What do you see? Glaciers, bears, fishing. That is your perfect Alaska trip. Alaska. And when you think about RVing, what is your mental image? Does your partner, spouse, family member think, I can't wait to be out in the woods. We're gonna be by a lake. We're not gonna have any cell phone coverage. And yours might be, I wanna be close to an urban area. I wanna go eat foodie food and use my RV as a hotel. Those two things are totally different. And if you use the word, I wanna go, RVing, the word RVing, but your images are totally different. You can see how there'd be a disconnect. <laughs> you ready to work out, Charlie? <laughs> are you ready to work out? Yeah. Yeah, you are. Yes, you are. Kind of reminds me of phrases like clean. Like if you ask your kids, is your room clean? And they're like, yeah, it's clean. And you go in there and like, this isn't clean. And be like, what's well, totally clean, right? It's the same word, totally different definition. That's right. It just depends on where you're coming from. Yeah. But the most important thing is to actually share yes. what the mental image is. Okay. Okay. 
share what that mental image is so that the other person knows what kind of trip they want right exactly and then you can be on the same page and then what happens is people's frustration levels aren't mounting and then mm -hmm. you don't know how to like connect again yes right? yes yeah the truth is you get to define what RVing is with whomever you RV with now and that experience can be whatever you'd like and I think there might need to be some compromises. I think when you share these images, like Trish was talking about these foodie towns or cities, and I know our daughter really liked the big cities, mm -hmm. and um, you know we all have different things we like to do. When you come together and you start sharing those ideas, you can start to make compromises on, hey, all right, let's go here and we'll do this trip, and then later in the year, we'll go do that trip. That's right. I think communication is essential. Right, but it's not just talking about terms, it's talking about definitions. Yes. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Okay, so speaking of communication, we actually had the opportunity to um, have a webinar with the Freemans. Yes. And it was kind of part of KYD 55, which is our 55 day health and wellness challenge, which by the way, it's completely free and it's not too late to join us. Yeah, so join us there. We'll put a link in the um, description below. We'll just go to KYD55.com. Yes. So anyway, we met up with the Freemans on a webinar podcast to talk all about communication between couples mm -hmm. and they shared with us a term called unspoken expectations well, these are skills that you can gain because i know some people watching this are going to think either i'm not a good communicator mm -hmm. or my partner is really not a good communicator and it's causing challenges maybe that's just who they are no 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 these are skills you're not either born a great communicator or not you can learn the skills for them for life I think one other thing too, people think that we love each other so much. We have so much passion, desire for what we're going to create. We're going to go on explorations. We're going to get an RV. We're going to travel. And that's all we need is this sort of this yeah. chemistry, this attraction, this love. And here's a hashtag moment for you, right? Love is just not enough. Mm -hmm. Healthy relationships take skills. Ooh. And though love, love is a requirement for sure, you need that, but that's not going to carry the day. It's not going to carry you through all of the challenges that you might come up against, uh, getting a flat tire, not knowing why the hot water heater is not working, all the, and we'll go into this, expectations that you have, even going on vacation. How many couples we talk to, mm -hmm. they're like, you know, it's been challenging. We're just going to go on a vacation and all will be well because we removed ourselves from the challenges. But without the right communication mm -hmm. and what we can go into, your expectations will still cause tension. You still cannot communicate well while on vacation. So you can change to a beautiful scenery and still end up feeling disconnected, not heard, not understood by your partner. That's, that's worst case, right? Because mm -hmm. here you are in this great place, but you're disconnected from your partner. And then you climb it all over. Okay. No, I don't think so. We just finished. We're gonna take Charlie on a walk and keep talking. You know, we mentioned unexpressed expectations can lead to disappointment mm -hmm. and stacked disappointment can lead to resentment and none mm -hmm. of this is good. So remember no. in the beginning, we told you that the person who's spearheading, watch out because this might backfire <laughs> because we think that the person that's spearheading it probably has the most responsibility in making it a positive experience. Well, and I read once or maybe I can't remember where I learned this, but it was really recent that a happy crew is a happy captain yes. and a captain that's going to take responsibility for making sure that everybody on the team everyone in the crew is getting what they need getting what they need and is happy and is uh they're not hungry and they're not tired <laughs> is going to mean that the captain is happy mm -hmm. right and then the he is going to be able to rely or she yes rely on the crew yes. right because yeah. it really does take a team to make something like boating rving any extracurricular mm -hmm. sport you need a team yeah and so that's what the point is that the person who's spearheading really makes sure that their team is ready to go which means that your needs actually might come last if this is something that you're trying to get everybody mm -hmm. to do Okay, one of the reasons why I think sometimes somebody in the family, spouse, family member, 
doesn't want to get on board with the whole RV thing is because they might be thinking, I know exactly what's going to happen. <laughs> we're going to get an RV and then that's all we're going to do. Yeah. And the things that I like to do are going to now take a back seat because mm -hmm. it's going to be RV, RV, RV. <laughs> You know, the other day we were sitting around um, water and this woman blows up her chair and she sits on it and she literally floats around reading a book, I think for like four hours. And she was like, by the time she was done, she was like way on the other side, but that was perfection to her. So imagine if she was told, we're gonna go on this trip and then we're gonna go hike and then we're gonna go do this and then we're gonna go run. And she's like, uh, my idea of chilling out is chilling out. Yes, yeah, so. and, and I don't think anybody wants to sign up for something and then and know that you know hey we're gonna go and I'm just gonna be badgered to go hiking I'm gonna be badgered to go mm -hmm. you know or or maybe somebody in the, you know a spouse in the family does most of the cooking or cleaning and so it's like okay yeah so you want me to go so just so that I can work the whole time that's yeah. not my idea of vacation point of this is to set express these expectations right. in a positive manner and say up front say hey, here's my fear mm -hmm. my fear is we're gonna get the RV and then we're no longer gonna do trips that are important to me. Right. My fear is is that I'm going to constantly be pressured to do things that I don't really enjoy doing. Right. And so that way you can come together as a couple or a family and define what it is that you're going to do with the RV. Well, and have maybe an all hands meeting if you have a family because remember it's one thing to communicate back and forth where you might be really skilled at doing that. Mm -hmm. It's another thing <laughs> hi there to have a conversation with maybe three or four kids on what is it that you're expecting thank you <laughs> what is it that you're expecting from this trip together as a family right yes, yes. kids also have their expectations of what they enjoy doing and they probably don't want to get called out the whole time for doing what they would normally do which is socialize yeah good point point. and then the other thing that came to mind is not to just go along with it and the Freemans mm. had some really good tips on maybe just kind of going along with the trip or going along with the plan right there's a difference between a compliant yes and a commitment yes mm -hmm. it would be easy for a reserve partner to say yeah sure we'll do that but you can already feel that energy is like I'm, not gonna I'm really, just really pacifying yeah. this this conversation because I'm uncomfortable with whatever emotion might be there so as a reserve I need to be sure that I'm engaged and I'm actually giving a commitment yes I am committing to that and I'm also committing to remember it. And I'm also committing to be responsible for this agreement, not like you made it up and then you're the one that has to remind me all the time. No, I'm, I'm taking this on like this is now our agreement and I'm responsible for this as well. Okay, so the real key point here in this whole thing is communicating responsibly. And beforehand. And beforehand. If there's one thing to get out of this video, it's how to communicate in advance. Yes. And probably the next big point here in this conversation mm -hmm. is hidden agendas can Ooh. sometimes backfire. Okay, as it relates to hidden agendas, we have to start with a story. <laughs> you might remember when we floated the Colorado River, it's actually Cataract Canyon, mm -hmm. beginning of season five on our way to Alaska. Mm -hmm. And we wake up in the morning and we put the big rafts in the water and everybody's trying getting to know each other and we're floating down. Everyone does introductions and we could tell we were going to get along with everyone, right? Yeah, totally. And then uh, it didn't take very long before someone said, so what's, what's the worst story of like people being on the boat together? Yes. And uh, he said, well, there was this one time where this guy wanted to go on this trip for a long time mm -hmm. and he knew his wife wouldn't have it at all. So he didn't tell her what they were doing. And she shows up with high heels oh. and luggage, like luggage, luggage. And they're on the boat, they're floating down. And she says, when do we get to the big boat? <laughs> <laughs> Poor thing. I feel so bad for her because she was snowed over. The truth yes. is he knew what kind of person she was. She was expecting something and he blindsided her. So, so then we said, what happened? Helicoptered out of the river. <gasps> Helicoptered out of the river. So this is an extreme. We better get going. This is an extreme example of yes. hidden agendas but i think maybe everybody has a, maybe a little bit of a hidden agenda in terms of what might happen when they get an rv well and you might not even realize that you have a hidden agenda you just think okay if we get out there it'll all come together because mm -hmm. this is what i want to do with everyone and they're gonna love it yeah. once they just see it and they feel it yeah and you know you're kind of pulling a rope 
Yeah, like, you mean pushing a rope or pulling a rope? Yeah. Pushing a rope. That's what I mean. <laughs> but no, I mean, like, seriously, like, it could be like, you know, I, we're going to get an RV and all of a sudden everybody's going to enjoy doing all the things that they've never really enjoyed doing in the past. Ever. The kids are going to be like, where's my phone? It doesn't matter. I'm. We like being in the outdoors. Now, yeah, right, right. Yeah, right. exactly. I think what we're saying here, if we were to boil it down to the most basic terms, is it's okay to be vulnerable. It's okay to say... I want to spend special time together and I think that this vehicle will help us do it and maybe your family or whomever you're trying to convince in a positive way might think oh my gosh all this time you've just wanted to like hang out with me more Be with me yeah. yeah and then they can understand that you have endearing qualities instead of a sneaky ambition so you're saying you don't even really need to hide it. If you can get to what it is you're really trying to accomplish or what you desire, yeah. you don't need, it doesn't need to be hidden. You no. can say, I want to do this because I want to be together. I want to make memories rather than just kind of getting it and then hoping your whole plan comes together. Right. That's easy. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's easier said than done, yeah. but it's a good start. <laughs> now let's talk about helicopter RVers. <laughs> you may have heard this term from parenting styles, helicopter parenting. I think that's hilarious. <laughs> sometimes I can be a helicopter parent. Sometimes I can be totally hands off. I dabble. Mm -hmm. So, um, but I'll just relate this to technology and you'll probably see the links in RVing. You know, I love getting help with my phone or my computer from people that know more than I do. But sometimes I just need to be able to do it at my own pace. Like not having a kid go, here, just give this to me. And then like, there. Yes. Yeah. Like, this is how it needs <laughs> to be happening? done. Mm -hmm. And then it kind of takes the joy out of RVing or learning about your own technology. And it also takes the authority away from you having ownership over doing something new. And I think yes. that's one of the big pieces is if everybody's going to be on board with this, they probably need to feel like they're not being like dragged along or told what to do, but they have an equal part like participation I in it. I personally think one of the things that I enjoy the most about RVing is that it is kind of serious business, mm -hmm. right? You're moving big equipment and you do need to go through a procedure and a checklist like anything from planes to boats and hobbies that yeah. have big equipment you need to you need to do it safely right and because it's serious business that's where you have the sense of accomplishment that you actually did something and then yes. when you get home you're like hey we did that we took this thing on our home on wheels and we took it into a national park and we went across bridges and under bridges and all these great right. places and and there is a sense of accomplishment that you're capable of doing something right so if if we as either either a husband or a wife or a father or a mother whatever the case is end up doing things for everyone else in the family yeah then you're sending a message that you're really not capable of doing it, or I have to be there, and that's not as fun. Right, and I catch myself doing that all the time as the kids grow older, and I realize, okay, they like do not need my help. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but it's a good eye opener for them because I can kind of reverse that and be like, well, you know, like when I'm saying that I got this on my phone, and they're like, oh yeah, mm -hmm. and so just having maybe parallel experiences in other things mm -hmm. will help you understand from different perspectives how something might make you feel. And just one point of caution, teaching um, teaching anybody can be a distraction. Right. So what we have learned to do is find opportunities where we're not in a rush mm -hmm. and we're not holding anyone else up and there's lots of space. And then we use those as opportunities to do some, some training, I suppose. Yeah, right, all hands on. Yeah. Anyhow, so, um, hey, the other thing is you wanted to share maybe some benefits, advantages, some things that maybe if someone's a little reluctant to jump into the RV lifestyle, mm -hmm. things that they might not be... Um, considering like that yes. are bonuses yes so we've talked about things to watch out for but maybe these are things because you haven't rv'd yet that you didn't even realize were so cool and mm -hmm. i think one of the things is being able to see places and um go to places that you well first go and see places that you would never have seen that was one of the first things we experienced when we went to destin for the first time mm -hmm. we're on this squeaky sand we're watching these gorgeous sunsets we're on crystal blue water and we're thinking we would have never been here if it wasn't for the RV. Because it was just one of those destinations for us being from Arizona that would have just been too far away. And too expensive. And too expensive for us to do Destin 
alone. Right. But on a longer RV trip, it's mm -hmm. something that you can just like swing by and right. include. I feel like I'm playing in the snow, but it's warm. It's the most amazing thing. I thought siesta was amazing. I feel like this is like siesta, but different. Uh, the thing for, for us that we didn't really know until we started RVing more mm -hmm. is places that we had been on vacation, you know, mm -hmm. hotel, ho uh, let's say airplane, hotel, VRBO or mm -hmm. something like that, car rental. By RV, we found it to be a much more enjoyable experience. Mm -hmm. um, Miami comes to mind. There's a lot of these examples, but Miami comes to mind. Miami, um, I don't know, we just like, we just like it's Miami. It's a fun just, vibe. Just, it's a fun vibe. But the difference between us being there in RV yes. versus hotel was like night and day. Totally. And so sometimes just, you know, we go to a place and we're like, oh, we've been here before, but it's just so much more chill. I think one of the things that that, one of the reasons is number one, because you get a different timeline. When you're on a vacation, you're like, go, go, go. You want to mm -hmm. get in as much. I mean, maybe you like to sit by the pool and do nothing, but sometimes vacations can have a lot of pressure because there's this expectation mm -hmm. that it's supposed to be a total blast and we're spending all this money. So we got to ring it out mm -hmm. and in a rig, it's like, it's just a different pace. Mm -hmm. And you know, you get to come back to your own food and your own coffee and your own bed. And you have um, a respite from the high level mm -hmm. that you have to put out to have an experience. And then you can come back home and relax. Yes. And it really does does feel like your home. You're not staying in someone else's mm -hmm. house and you're not staying in a hotel. Yeah. So, so, all right. So just a little bit of a recap. So like preconceived notions as to what RVing, um, you might think it is versus what it, you can actually make it. Right. Right. And make sure that you have an RV that's going to serve you. Mm -hmm. Um, unspoken or unexpressed expectations, just get it all out there and, and, do it in such a way where he says, hey, my fear is if we're going to do this, that this is going to happen. Right. And that you can start having communication around and it. That way there's no hidden agenda. Mm -hmm. But really, we get to see the vulnerable side of what your mission is. Like, I just want to be close. I just want to have fun together. Mm -hmm. That's and it. And maybe that doesn't... Here's the scary part. Maybe once you get your vulnerable and you get those that, that desire out, maybe, maybe you can do it without an RV. Right. Maybe you can solve that without it being an RV. Yes. And you can and and maybe by being open to it not being an RV a bunch of options can happen. Or just um, with the RV and it doesn't have to be full time. We get letters all the time and say, oh, I went out this weekend. I'm not full time yet. I really want to be full time. I feel I just can't I can't I can't. It's like Nobody said you had to do that. You can mm -hmm. get just as much out of your weekends um, in an RV as you could living in it full time. I know mm -hmm. it would look different. I know that sounds totally irrational, but it's totally true. When you when you set out to accomplish something, you can do it in a small amount of time. It doesn't have to be yeah. all the time. And then, of course, lastly, just let everybody on your trip have their own trip. Yes. And, you know, take responsibility for the things that they can do so that they have a sense of accomplishment too. Yeah. And I think having a sense of pride in the fact that you're helping other people have fun mm -hmm. if you're the captain of the ship, so mm -hmm. to speak. So um, that's not just for the kids, but also for whomever you're traveling with. I think that you can walk away thinking, hey, I helped everybody. I didn't hover. I didn't tell them what it was supposed to be like, but I helped, you know, bridge that gap between yeah. what they thought it was going to be and what it could actually be. And then, of course, you've heard us say this a million times, but starting small now is better than starting big later. Mm -hmm. And so maybe if you want to just get started, um, we've just recently did a video um, where the pop-up camper is like the unsung hero. Right. Of, totally of underrated. It's totally underrated, right? So find out what can you do to get started now and um, be open to a lot of possibilities to just get the adventure started and mm -hmm. figuring out the things that you like. And you could always upgrade later. Yes. Right. Just get going. So uh, we hope this video was helpful to you. And we just like being here with you. So thank mm -hmm. you for tuning in and writing us and sharing with us and um, showing your support by um, showing up here. It really mm -hmm. means a lot to us. And we hope that you gather just one little golden nugget from these videos that you can use in your own life to make it spectacular. Lots to come. We're glad you're here. We'll catch you next Sunday. Bye for now.